Off-grid text messaging? Yes, please. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey guys, wanted to take a couple of minutes today to introduce you to something called WebChat. It is a fantastic application built by Craig, KM6LYW. Craig has done a fantastic job with this particular application. Real quick, the way it works is we can use a web browser to get messages into the APRS system. However, the really cool thing is you don't necessarily have to use the main APRS frequency. If you dialed to an off frequency, you could have two-way text messaging between two radios in a simplex format. Or, if you do want to run on the APRS frequency, you can extend that range quite a bit. This is a super valuable tool to have in your toolkit, and one that I have really been using since I discovered it about three or four weeks ago. I will leave a link to Craig's video where he goes over a lot more of the details of actually using the application. Today, we're going to use an installer script that I wrote to get this installed on a Raspberry Pi and get it up and running. This will also work great on an x86 machine. I've already installed it on my Evolve laptop. Let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get this up and running. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing installed. First of all, we need to head over to github.com forward slash km4ack. That will bring you into this page here. Right up at the top, let's click on repositories. Once we get to the repositories page, let's come right here to web chat. And again, guys, this is just an installer script for Craig's great work. Once we get into the web chat repository, let's scroll down to where you see this install right here. And we're simply going to click on these two little boxes right here, and that will copy this code that we need. Let's minimize the web browser and let's go ahead and open up a terminal window. Once the terminal window is opened up, let's right click and paste that comment that we just copied from GitHub. And then let's go ahead and just press return. It will ask for your call sign and I'm just going to go ahead and give it my call sign. And the SSID is optional. I'm going to use 14 because I know that I'm not using that one for anything else at this current point in time. Once I've got that entered, it will ask me for my latitude. Uh, and next is obviously going to ask for longitude. Let me show you guys real quick how to find that. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the browser real quick. And I'm going to open up uh, Google Maps. Once you've got Google Maps opened up, what you need to do is pick the point where you are. And we'll, I'm going to just set mine kind of right here. You go ahead and left click and that will drop a little marker in that particular location. And right down here at the bottom, you will see your latitude and longitude. You need to copy that down so we can enter it into the, the terminal window. Once you've got that copied down, let's go ahead and head back to the terminal window. And I tell you what, let me just minimize that browser so it's out of the way. My latitude is 35.938. And we'll go ahead and press return again. It may ask you for your pseudo password if you're not running for uh, if you're not running on a Raspberry Pi. If you're running on the x86 machine, it will ask you for your pseudo password. If it does, you do need to enter that. Let's just sit back and give this thing a few minutes to install everything. Now, sometimes not everything goes as expected. I am running on the brand new Raspberry Pi OS Bookworm, and I have hit a snag when I tried to run this install script. So it looks like the error is externally managed environment. So let's see if we can fix that with uh, sudo, let's see, sudo move forward slash user forward slash lib forward slash Python 3.11 EX, and I'm going to uh, just press the tab key to autofill the rest of it. Now, I want to move that to the same directory, but we're just going to make a backup file of it. So we'll say uh, forward slash user forward slash lib forward slash Python 3.11. 
And we'll do the EX and tab key again to give us externally managed dot backup. So BKUP. That should move that out of the way. Now, uh, we can't just restart it from our home directory. I'm going to clear that screen, and you guys may not run into this error, but I did want to show it just in case you do. Uh, we'll move to the bin directory uh, with cd space bin. Don't put a forward slash before that bin, but cd bin forward slash web chat. If we list that out, we can see the install uh, command again. So we will start that with bash space install. And let's see if that will get it. It is going to ask us for our information again because it doesn't store that until the script finishes up. So I'm going to give it the same info that I did just a second ago. And we'll see if we get through it any better this time. Now as the install progresses, you may get some of these warnings here that uh, the path is not correct or it's not installed in a good path. Don't worry about those. I think that will be okay. At this point, it tells us that everything is updated and the installation is complete. Let's click the start menu up here and see if we can find web chat. Looks like it's in the other category in our menu. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and that should start us up. Now we'll ask for a pseudo password here. We'll go ahead and give it that and press enter. And that should bring us into this web chat startup screen. For now, I'm just going to exit it because we need to do a couple more things before we start. Now, this next thing is going to be specific for the Raspberry Pi. If you're running on x86, you won't have to deal with this. I'm going to open up my uh, file explorer and go ahead and go into that bin directory and into web chat. Once I get into here, I'm going to right click on web chat and choose the text editor. And we need to make it one change right up at the top of the file. So let's make this a little bit bigger so you guys can view it easier. And we're looking for this line right here uh, to use the Chromium browser. So all we need to do is we need to remove that pound sign right at the very beginning of that line. We'll just go ahead and press Control S and we shouldn't need to make any more changes after that. For this video, I will be using the MobiLink TNC3. You do need to verify that you have the correct settings in the MobiLink app before proceeding. Once you've uh, got those settings correct, let's go ahead and attempt to pair that device. So we're going to come up to the Bluetooth uh, controller on the Raspberry Pi and click Add Device. Once the MobiLink shows up, I'll go ahead and uh, highlight it and then choose Pair. And you will more than likely get this error message here, pairing successful, uh, but this device has no services which can be used with this Raspberry Pi. Don't sweat that for the time being. Now let's get some of this other stuff off of our screen and let's go ahead and start web chat again. Once the web chat startup script loads, let's go ahead and choose option three for the MobiLink. It'll let you know that it's scanning for the MobiLink TNC. And as long as the MobiLink TNC is found, it will tell you that it's connected and it's ready to start web chat. It tells us to return to this screen and press 5, then enter to exit the application and to press any key to continue. So let's go ahead and press any key right here. And just give it a second. You may see some errors with Chromium trying to start up. That's not a problem. And more than likely, you will see this here where it says the site can't be reached. That's not a big deal at all. What we're going to do is just go ahead and refresh that page and that should bring you into the web chat 3.2.1 screen here. Let's go ahead and give this thing a test by sending a message to WXBot and we'll just say today. Go ahead and click the send on that and we'll see if we get a return from that here in just a second. So we got the thumbs up telling us that our message was acknowledged and then it sent us the weather report. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and click the send position button and that will send out uh, our position over the APRS system. Let's go ahead and verify that that was actually picked up by a Digipeter. So the call sign I want to track is KM4ACK-14. Let's go ahead and press return 
and you'll see that we just got that beacon through and we get a comment here APRSD web chat beacon so it looks like everything is working correctly now when you're ready to exit out of the application you'll just go ahead and click on that terminal that's running here we'll press 5 and enter and that should shut everything down including the web browser I appreciate you guys tuning in today. If you found this information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.